I am Anil Kumar. In this video, we'll take a few trigonometric functions and check if they are even functions or odd functions or neither. Here is an example, or rather a question from my subscriber. We need to figure out if y equals to cos cube x sine square x is even odd or neither. Now, before getting into that, let me explain you the very basic concept of what do we understand by even or odd function and we'll take up simple examples cos x and tan x and then we'll get into part c as many of my subscribers are new to this topic so let's talk about what is even function so when i say even function let me write down here even functions we really mean that if i replace x with minus x then is it equal to f of x so that is even so what i'm trying to say here is that the values of the function let me sketch a graph here to show you when we say that the negative x values produce the same y value that means look at a graph kind of like this right uh, which is a parabola you will notice that there is always a negative value for which, let's say it's negative 1, the value is positive 1. And on the other side also, for positive 1, there is a value, which is again positive 1, right? Similarly, you'll find that for negative 2, we get a value which is 4. And we do have the same value for positive 2. So f of minus x is same as f of x, correct? So the y values are same when we change the x values from positive to negative. Such functions are called even functions and they are symmetric about y axis, right? So they are symmetric about y axis. So I hope this concept is clear. Now let's talk about odd functions. So when I say the functions are odd, in that case, what do we expect from f of minus x? Negative value. So that makes it odd function, right? So the graph of odd function will be kind of, um, let me sketch one here and then we'll talk about it. Kind of like this, right? So, so as you can see here, this particular graph, we do have a value, let's say minus something, right? So a value here which is let us say b right i'm just making minus b i should write then for a positive value let's say this is minus a that is a then for a positive value of a i will have a value which will be positive b you get my point so so what we see here is that f of minus x is negative of f of x correct so these graphs are actually symmetric about the the origin i mean it's not looking that i mean you understand the concept okay so so these are symmetric about origin let me write down here so symmetric about origin so this is the basic concept and now let us check some trigonometric functions and understand whether they are even or odd so let me begin with cosine x so cosine x is kind of a sine graph, which is kind of like this, correct? It's kind of like this. Okay. Now, cos x starts with 1, so the y-axis is kind of here. And it's 0, it goes to negative. Let's say that is the cos x graph. You will notice here that we do have a value which will make cos of minus x as equal to cos of x. Right. So, so we see that uh, if I write a negative value here, that is to say, if I write f of minus x for cosine x, that means cos of minus x, we have to just replace x with negative. And we know cos of minus x is indeed equals to cos x, correct? And therefore, we can say f of minus x is equals to f of x so y is kind of f of x right so we are given f of x equals to cos x if i replace x with negative value i get cos of minus x 
and cos of minus x is positive x. Some of you can also see it kind of like this. Uh, let me sketch it here. We know the, the rule, all are positive here, sine is positive in quadrant 2, tan in 3, cos in quadrant 4. So if I take up any angle in, let's say, quadrant 1, which is x value, right? So when I say cos of x, then that is what I'm trying to say, right? This is positive x, right? So same thing for the angle will be minus x. Do you see that? Minus x. And what you notice in this particular case, I mean, in both these quadrants, I mean, uh, angle is negative when you do counterclockwise, but cos is positive, right? So for both values, if I'm making a triangle, let me make a triangle here now. Okay, so you will notice that the adjacent side is same, right? This is the adjacent side and radius is always positive. So it is always positive in these two quadrants, correct? So that makes sense. It is therefore an even function, right? So it is an even function. Since f of minus x is f of x. Now let me take the function which is tan x. I could write this function as f of x as a ratio of sine x over cos x, correct? Now if I replace x with minus x, and that is what f of minus x will be, so we'll get sine of minus x divided by cos of minus x. And we know sine of minus x is negative sine x, because sine is negative in this quadrant, correct? So sine of negative and cos is positive, as we just saw. So that gives us negative sine x over cos x, which is indeed tan x. And I could write this as negative of f of x. And therefore, when we say that f of x is the negative of f of x, that means it's an odd function. Perfect. So this happens to be an odd function, since in this particular case, y equals to tan x, f of minus x is negative of f of x. So I hope the concept is clear, right? If you sketch this function, tan x, on this, cos x is in the denominator, so the zeros will become vertical asymptotes. Perfect, kind of like this. I'm just sketching one wave. And what you will notice is that when sine is zero, then it will be zero. So if you sketch this graph, it will be kind of like this, which is symmetric about the origin. So that is your tan x graph. Perfect. So you can easily see that the graph which we are talking about is indeed symmetric about the origin, right? So that is what we mean. I hope the concept is clear. And now we'll take up the Final question, y equals to cos cube x sine square x. Now let us check the function y equals to cos cube x sine square x, whether it is even odd or neither. So we can write this as f of x is given to us as cos cube x sine square x, right? So I prefer to write this as cos x to the power of 3, right, times sine x whole square, right? That will make things much simpler. So that is the function f of x. Now I'll write what f of minus x is. Replace x with minus x. So what do you get? You get cos of minus x whole cube times sine of minus x whole square, right? Now cos of minus x is cosine x. We know it is cos x, right? Since we know that cos of minus x is equals to cos of x and sine of minus, I mean, minus x is minus sine x, correct? So with that knowledge, we'll replace cos of minus x with cos x and the cube of this. And here, sine of minus x is minus sine x, square of this. Well, once you do square, it becomes positive, right? So what we get here is cos cube x 
times. When you square, it becomes positive, so you get sine squared x. And this is exactly the same as f of x. Since f of minus x is equal to f of x, we will say that the function is function is e1, right? So it is an e1 function. So I hope the concept is clear and that is how you are going to apply this strategy for any trigonometric function. Feel free to write your comment, share your views and let me again thank my subscriber for posting such a beautiful question. Thank you and all the best.